This video is sponsored by Skillshare. On July 29th, it was made public that Marvel's Black Widow star Scarlett Johansson famously sued Walt Disney for breach of contract. And I stress made public for a reason. And it has only escalated since then, to the point where Black Widow may be blacklisted. Normally, a case like this would, with or without arbitration, have been solved behind closed doors without the public ever knowing. In this case, however, the lawsuit could very well have been made as public as it has become on purpose, as the public perception is a front line in a secret war, if you will, over power and position taking place behind the scenes of Disney. In this video, we'll begin by going through what the ScarJo lawsuit is about at the surface level, before we peel it apart layer by layer to examine why it ultimately may be about Disney power players trying to get rid of Bob Chapek, and why. In other words, we may be looking at some corporate level Game of Thrones going on behind the scenes of the House of Mouse. That's business. But ultimately, that business is about creative expression and, as we shall see, creative freedom. If that inspires you to explore your own creativity, then that's where Skillshare comes into the picture, and they have you covered. Skillshare, this video sponsor, is an online learning community for creatives where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity to find your way. Skillshare offers classes in topics such as film and video production, creative writing, entrepreneurship, and freelancing. Whether you're just starting out, or you're already a working creative wanting to up your game, Skillshare has classes to fit your skill level and your schedule. Classes are usually under 60 minutes and include a combination of video lessons and a class project, enabling you to quickly acquire new skills. For instance, say you want to become a YouTube creator, or you are already one who wants to take it to the next level. Then the 11 lessons in the class YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD is for you. Since Skillshare sponsors our video, we naturally have a deal for you. The first 1000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare premium membership. That's one month of premium membership for free, so you can explore your creativity. So click the link in the description to sign up, and then we'll get into what Scarlett Johansson suing Disney is really all about. To briefly go through the public events. On July 29th, Scarlett Johansson sued Disney over breach of contract over the release of Marvel's Black Widow. According to the filing, Disney releasing it on Disney Plus day and date with the theatrical release undercut the movie's earnings potential at the box office, meaning it won't hit the box office gross threshold which would have triggered a huge back-end payout for ScarJo herself. The filing argues that Disney had no right to undercut the movie's box office potential that way, so pay up. Disney did not take kindly to this, and shot back with a statement which not only affirmed that in their view they were well within their rights to do what they did, but which also went far in suggesting that in light of the lockdowns, ScarJo was greedy and insensitive for making such a frivolous lawsuit in the first place especially since she already had gotten $20 million up front. And due to the Disney Plus release which she so protested, there would be plenty more where that came from anyway. This, in turn, led to a whole slew of articles condemning Disney for releasing such a misogynist statement, let alone for outing ScarJo's salary, which incidentally confirms that if she isn't the highest paid actor in the world, she's still right up there in the top bracket, out-earning her male Avengers co-stars. One of the most critical voices was her agent, Brian Lord, who also happens to be one of the head honchos of CAA, the top talent firm in Hollywood. Later, the president of the Screen Actors Guild chimed in, saying Disney should be ashamed of themselves. Since then, the rhetoric has hardened even more, and there are now rumors Disney may cut ties with her altogether, 
killing all her upcoming movies at Disney, leaving Warner and DC to swoop her up instead, like they did with James Gunn. Take note of how all the Hollywood outlets are suddenly siding against Disney in this matter, pointing out how Disney is all about female empowerment, yet they would do this to a strong female like Scarlett Johansson. But look closer, and you'll find that the one being blamed for Disney's insensitivity and alleged misogyny is Disney CEO Bob Chapek alone. By contrast, the same coverage that vilifies Chapek portrays Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige as a hero who is annoyed at Disney for dropping Black Widow on Disney Plus at all, while former CEO Bob Iger is hailed as a saint who never would have let it come to this in his days, and who now despairs over how badly Bob Chapek has managed to bungle everything, most notably talent relations, during his brief tenure. The unsaid but implied message of numerous of these articles is clear. The penny-pinching Bob Chapek has to go, reinstate Bob Iger so sanity can return to Disney. Whenever messages like these are repeated in the trades covering the industry, then more often than not, they are part of an orchestrated campaign. Across several of our tri-weekly morning livestreams, writer and producer Kamran Pasha have broken down what may really be going on here. Links to archived versions of these livestreams can be found in the description below. Himself a Hollywood insider and former journalist, Pasha points out that under normal circumstances, ScarJo's agent, the CAA head honcho, would simply have made a phone call to Chapek and the matter would have been resolved quietly behind the scenes, with a standard operating procedure. It happens all the time, and none of us ever hear about it. In this case, however, they went straight for a public lawsuit right off the bat. And in the process, it was equally publicly made clear that Bob Iger and Kevin Feige were firmly in Scarlet's court. Or, as this reading of the situation suggests, Iger, Feige, and CAA's Brian Lord could be the real instigators, with Scarlet merely helping them out. But if this reading of the situation has any merit to it, what could possibly motivate them to unite against JPEG this way? Bob Iger personally appointed Bob JPEG to succeed him, but JPEG just may have rocked the boat in ways Iger wasn't prepared for. This was first revealed to the world by Variety in a May 12th piece titled Disney's New World Order Leads to Confusion and Bruised Egos. In this article, it was revealed that not only had the personal relationship between Iger and Chapek grown cold, but Chapek's reorganization of Disney had caused a lot of hurt and resentment among those who enjoyed great power and autonomy under Iger's rule. It is often said that Iger prioritized talent and talent relations, and he gave the creatives the creative freedom to do what they did best, and this way, Disney thrived under his reign. That is, however, a truth in need of some modification. Iger never gave any one filmmaker the autonomy to do as they pleased. What he did was hire studio heads like Kevin Feige and Kathleen Kennedy on multi-year contracts, and then he gave them near-complete autonomy to run their division as they liked. The individual creatives working under them, in turn, had no more creative freedom than what the division had allowed them to have. In the case of Kevin Feige and Marvel, for the longest of time, that worked. In the case of Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm, not so much. When she decided to use Star Wars as a platform for political activism, there were no checks or balances in place to stop her, and no mechanism to remove her. Likewise, if Kevin Feige suddenly were to learn all the wrong messages from Kathleen Kennedy, there would, under Iger's reign, be no mechanisms to stop him either. Well, enter Bob Chapek. What Chapek did was take power away from studio heads like Feige and Kennedy, and instead give that power to the distribution and merchandise divisions. Under JPEG's rule, had it been implemented at the time, Kathleen Kennedy couldn't fire Gina Carano on a whim. 
not without checking with merchandise if they were cool with her firing their hottest selling toy. Likewise, under JPEG's rule, had it been implemented at the time, Feige would not be free to greenlight the various upcoming Marvel movies and Disney Plus series we're getting, not without clearing it with distribution first, as they have final say in what gets a theatrical release and what goes to Disney Plus. The Variety piece even explicitly states, Hollywood dealmakers noted that the new structure at Disney is Byzantine and more convoluted than necessary, adding an extra managerial layer into the process of getting projects made. One of those dealmakers who disapprove of JPEG's reorganization would be Brian Lord, CAA head honcho and Scarlett Johansson's agent. What the Variety piece doesn't say, but which is implied, is that under JPEG's rule, the back-end deals would have to be reformed as well, and that cuts directly into the dealmaker's bottom line. Finally, Bob JPEG wants to end the multi-year contracts the division heads have enjoyed up until this point. Say that a studio head wants to force a direction which causes audiences to stop watching and stop buying the merchandise. Under Iger's rule, nothing would change until the contract was up five years later. But under JPEG's rule of shorter-term contracts, distribution and merchandise would hit the alert, and that studio head would be out the door already next year. Taking power away from the studio heads and giving it to distribution and merchandise on the face doesn't sound pretty. But distribution and merchandise are in turn driven by audience and consumer preferences. In a roundabout way, giving power to distribution and merchandise is giving power back to the audience. To many in the Hollywood establishment, suddenly answering to the very same audience they are accustomed to speaking down to is a very scary notion. In an August 10th Small Screen Co. UK article titled Disney in Turmoil, creators are not happy with Bob Chapek. Entertainment journalist Edward Lauder breaks down how, according to his inside sources, there is discontent within Disney over how Chapek is running things. The source of the discontent is that where Iger is all about content and those who create said content, Chapek is all about product. While the article does not say this, I would again like to stress that content is what the company puts out. But product is what the audience actually spend their hard-earned cash buying. What the article does say though, is this. There is a lot of infighting between Chapek and his team in one end, who have the shareholders on their side, mostly. And in the other end, the creators. People at Pixar, Marvel Studios, Walt Disney Animation Studios, and now also 20th Century Fox. The shareholders are in it to make money. And if the shareholders are mostly behind Chapek and his vision, thinking that will make them more money, then that means Chapek has already won, and the establishment has lost. The only way to turn that around is to use the media to portray Chapek as a villain, in the hopes of turning more shareholders against him. Kamran Pasha is of the opinion that the secret war behind the scenes is why the Scarlett Johansson lawsuit was made this public, and he has the following prediction of what may come next. What we're witnessing here is a massive PR effort by entrenched Hollywood elites to remove someone that's threatening to, to, to take their power away and, and give it back to the consumer and to the public and to the shareholders. So we're going to see more and more of these PR attacks in the media against Bob Chapek, suggesting that he is a weak leader, suggesting that he has lost the support of the people inside of Disney, suggesting that he will be forced to step down. That's going to come. And the more light, and we're going to see more of that as he solidifies his power. This is going to be the increasingly shrill screams of a system that is dying and is going to present to the industry and try to present to the public the opposite of what is happening. The very fact that these articles are now saying 
that Bob Chapek has the support of the shareholders means that this war is over. And so they're trying to position, even in these articles, that he is somehow beleaguered, that he is the, that he's not going to be able to sustain his power because Bob Iger doesn't like him and powerful people like the heads of Pixar and Marvel don't like him. But the shareholders like him, the owners of the company who are trying to make money like him. And th the only way those shareholders can make money is if the public likes what he's doing. And so for them to back him means that they believe the public is going to be on side of where he's going to take this. The fact that his merchandising is his focus means that he's public oriented. That is exactly where Hollywood doesn't want to be at this moment of its sort of corrupt downfall, right? At this at this late stage of this historical journey for the Hollywood elites, uh, the third generation of Hollywood elites that that aren't about creation, but about a about about going out to cocktail parties and bragging to each other about their unearned power that they got because of relationships and because their grandfather started something, you know, 80 years ago in Hollywood. So we're going to see more of these articles come out that are going to try to convince people that Bob Chapek is finished, and I believe each article that we see that is going to get increasingly more shrill, increasingly more emotional. And that will be a sign that the elites are actually losing their power. And that way, you know, it will be the opposite of how it's being presented. These articles are a desperate effort to stop the wave that is coming, which is the focus of Disney is not going to be back to the public and to the consumer rather than to the club. And the club is going to use every PR tool it has to try to change that perception for because once it is revealed the, that the little emperors have no clothes that this one guy who was essentially this unknown figure that the creatives in the industry didn't really know who came and took over knocked out bob Iger from you know from his path knocked out kathleen kennedy took down kevin feige he resolved like i'm sure he's going to resolve this with 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 scarlett johansson and then he's going to fix this i really do believe he's going to fix these conflicts that are being thrown at him. And all that is just going to increase his power and the PR is going to get even more agitated against him. If Bob Chapek's vision were to ultimately win out, then ironically, that could lead to more freedom for the actual content creators, not less. As success for distribution and merchandise relies on audiences actually wanting to spend money on the product Disney puts out. That equals a lot of opportunities for creatives, so if you feel inspired, remember to click the link in the description, so you too can explore your creativity and be among the 1000 to get a one month free trial of premium Skillshare membership. We shall keep you up to date with this story as it progresses. To make sure you don't miss out, subscribe and hit that bell, so you don't miss out on future updates. For now, let us know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.